Hello and welcome. This is our second video in continuation to the previous video on analysis of variance or ANOVA. In this video, we'll dig a little deeper into understanding the idea of total variation within group variation and between group variation. And we will also be solving the same problem that we looked at in the previous video completely manually. And you'll see that we'll get the exact same answer that we got using Excel or Python. Now, while it is almost certain that you would not be needing to go through these calculations on your own to solve a problem, we've already done that in the previous video. But understanding the steps that we're going to follow today would give you complete confidence on this topic. So it is recommended that you go through the process. Let's start with the idea of total variation. So let's say this is our data. These are three different genres, and this is our overall data. We can say if we take an average of all these points, and each point here represents the number of views in thousands. Let's say, hypothetically, the average would be somewhere here. Okay, this is the average. Now, what is the idea of total variation? Total variation would talk about the distance between this average and every single point. So you have to join every single point with this average and calculate the squared distance and add it. So I'm not drawing all the lines, but you get the idea that you have to connect every single point to this mean and you're calculating these squared distances and adding them all up. That's called the total variation. Now let's move on to the idea of within group variation. Pretty similar, you are looking at a particular group now and you're calculating the group average. Let's say this one. And now you're connecting every single point within a group with this average or mean. And you are summing up these squared distances. So you will call it sum of squares within. Now, likewise, you would do this for each group. So this is sum of squares within for one group but you will have a sum of squares within here as well for this group. And even here for, let's say, this is the average. So you will do the sum of squares within and you will add all three groups or whatever number of groups you have, you have to add it for all the groups. So this is sum of squares within. Now imagine you already know there was an overall average and every single group has an average as well. So let's say I mark the overall average here and I try to understand how far are the group averages from this overall average? So when I look at these three lines that I've just drawn, we are talking about the sum of squares between. What we are going to do is that we are going to represent every single point in a group with its own average. So you'll have to consider the number of points also available in a group when you do that. But broadly speaking, sum of squares between is a measure of how are the group averages with respect to the overall average? So this is just a visual way of looking at it. Let's move back to our data and get started with solving our problem. All right, so we are back in Excel now. We are using the spreadsheet and you can see this entire data as it was originally presented in the previous video. These are the three genres that we have and these are the views in thousands for the videos released for each of these genres. Now, what is the objective of this exercise? We're going to understand this idea of breaking the total variation into within group and between group variation. And we would like to come up with our own ANOVA table. We saw this could be easily obtained using Excel or Python, but we will get into the process of understanding it a little deeper so that we can populate our own analysis of variance table. Let's understand each of these components one by one. So let's first talk about the sum of squares total. I've already done half the work. It's just I'll walk you through these steps so that we save time there. This is the raw data. When, when we look at the sum of squares total, we have to consider the overall data. It doesn't matter which group it comes from. We are looking at every single data point. So if I scroll down, this is how our data was, right? And we can, of course, obtain an overall average. Now what we have to do is we have to understand how is each point against the overall average. So we have to take the difference between the point and the overall average. So I'm calling a point generally as an XI. In our case, this will be a collection of 60 values in total because we have 20 observations in each sample and we have three samples in total. So these are the 60 values that we have. And from each single value, we need to subtract overall average to understand how far it is from the average. And then, because when we take the difference, direction can be positive or negative, and some of these might cancel 
cloud, we always square it and add it. So when we do the total, the sum of squares total, if I scroll down, is something that we can calculate by adding all these values. Let's just put it here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to do a sum of all these values. This is the sum of squares total. What about the degrees of freedom? Now, this is something I explained at length in the video on one sample t-test. The degrees of freedom in this case will be n minus 1. How many observations we have? We have a total of 60 observations. And therefore, the degrees of freedom will be 60 minus 1. That will be 59. That's about the total sum of squares. Now, moving to the calculations of sum of squares within. Notice, in this case, the first thing that we need to do is that we need to calculate the average for each of the groups. So what is the average for this group? What is the average for this group? What is the average for this group? You can see we've used the average function here. Now, we are not concerned about how this mean is with respect to the other groups. For each group, its own mean is important. So we are going to take a difference between every single value within a group and subtract the mean from it to get the distance. So in general, we can write it that this is xi minus group average. These are the differences that we've got. This is for group one. Similarly, for group two, you're going to subtract its average. For group three, for every single point, you're going to subtract its average. Once again, these are just the differences. If you want to rule out the possibility of cancellation of magnitudes, we should square these values. And here we go, we have squared these values. So remember, the sum of squares within is going to be a sum of all these values. We'll have to do that total. Let me come here and do a sum. Sum of all the squared differences with respect to the group mean. What about the degrees of freedom? So degrees of freedom in this particular case will be calculated for every single group. It is not necessary all the time that all the groups will have the same sample size. For each group, however, it is n minus 1. So if you have three groups, let's say n1 is the sample size of the first group. For that, it will be n1 minus 1. For the second group, it will be n2 minus 1. And for the third group, it will be n3 minus 1. And what will be the total degrees of freedom? It will be the total of all these. So in this case, the answer would be n1 plus n2 plus n3 minus 3. What is this n1 plus n2 plus n3 in our case? This is going to be the total number of observations, which is 60. 60 minus 3, it's going to be 57. This is the degree of freedom that we get here. Now coming to the sum of squares between. When we talk about sum of squares between, we are essentially representing every single data point with its own average. So let's say we know there are group averages, but if you do not have group level visibility, you don't get within the group, then can I safely represent every single data point with the group average? So what I mean to say is this, can I convert this entire data to be a collection of the group averages only? Because if I take an average of this now, it'll still be 50.65. Similarly, if I take an average of these values even now, it will still be 49.15 because the value is one and the same. So we are not going within the group. We are representing every single data point with its average value. That's actually the purpose of that. Now, how do we calculate the sum of squares between? Let's understand that. In order to do this, we will have to find out the difference between every single group average and the grand average or the overall average. And we will have to square these. Now, this is not it. We have to do this for every single data point in the group. So how many data points do we have here? We have 20 data points. This is just for group one. Let me scroll to the right so that you can see it properly. So we've done it for group one. We have to do the exact same thing for group two. What is the mean for group two? It's here. We have to take a difference between this value and the overall average. Once again, it's here. So we can square it and we have to multiply it once again with 20 because there are 20 observations in each group, right? Likewise, you can just observe this in the formula bar here. I have to take the third group as well, multiply it with 20. And what would it contain? The difference between the group mean and the overall mean. And once again, we are going to square it. So this is the sum of squares between. What about the degrees of freedom? In this case, if you see, the only values that mattered were these three values. So we've already seen it in, in our past videos, if we have just three values to calculate an average, the degrees of freedom will be three minus one, that is two. 
are in general n minus 1. So it will be 3 minus 1 or 2 in this. All of these sheets where I've done this calculation are connected to the conclusion sheet that we discussed initially. It was blank, and now you can see all these values have populated. Now, if you see, when you add these two values, you're actually getting the third value, which is like this. So sum of squares total is equal to sum of squares within plus sum of squares between. So is the case with degrees of freedom. That is 59 here, and if you add 57 plus 2, you will get this here. What is this mean squared? Now, in order to get this mean squares between, you'll have to take the sum of squares between and divide it by the degrees of freedom. So this is what you get. Similarly, for mean squares within, you'll have to take the sum of squares within and divide it by the degrees of freedom. Now comes the F statistic. F statistic is nothing but a ratio of mean squares between divided by mean squares within. So in our case, we get this value as 31.49. How do we get the P value? P value is something that we can get by using F distribution. What all does it ask? It asks for the test statistic. Then it's asking for the degrees of freedom for numerator, which is two, and degrees of freedom for the denominator, which is 57. Let's just close this. This is the p-value that we got. Now, how do we find the critical value? Critical value has nothing to do with these calculations. It is a standard characteristic from the standard F distribution. So in order to get this, we'll be using F inverse. We've seen all these functions in the past as well. We've done a couple of videos so far. So if you've been following along, you would know what I'm doing. What is the probability? Now, by documentation, it says that it calculates the right tail probability. So you don't have to do any one minus here. Just write 5% probability region. Once again, degrees of freedom for numerator, which is 2, degrees of freedom for denominator, which is 57. If I close this, this value is 3.158. Now, if you remember, these are the exact values we saw in the previous video when we did these calculations using the built-in utility of Excel as well as Python. So once again, we have the same scenario. We have the critical value, which is 3.15, and we have the test statistic, which is 31.5, well within the rejection region, the null hypothesis stands rejected. Even from a p-value perspective, this entire area to the right of this red dotted line is the alpha region or the level of significance 5%. And this entire area to the right of the test statistic is the p-value. And the p-value in this case, of course, is much less than 0 0.05. So one and the same conclusion, we reject the null hypothesis. Hope this gave you a little more clarity on what works behind the scenes in ANOVA. And that was the intention. Thank you.